The courage to embrace the unknown is what separates the adventurers from the ideal dreamers. I'm Ryan, and this is another story from one of our many growing adventures. Three years ago, I picked up a puppy named Barrett. With his help, I would discover a new passion for the outdoors. As time passed, the adventures grew. We explored coastlines of British Columbia, winter camped on the snowy Rockies of Alberta, attended expos, making new friends and learning from new experiences of others, headed to Central America where we would explore the jungles and the reefs of Costa Rica. seeing different forms of wildlife, and making unforgettable memories. It's been a fast-paced three years of new friends and new experiences. But that feeling's back, an urge to explore overseas. A spur-of-the-moment decision that would turn into one epic adventure. Leaving Alberta late afternoon, I would fly to Toronto and then from there take the red eye all the way to Iceland. Normally, I don't have a problem sleeping on planes, but this time the excitement got to me and I only got about three hours of sleep before landing in Iceland. Finally landing in the most geothermal active place in the world, with the average volcano erupting every five years. This adventure couldn't even start without a reliable and capable vehicle. So, I present to you the 2015 manual transmission Suzuki Jiminy. By law, you need a 4x4 vehicle to go anywhere off a paved road in Iceland. This little beast will be my vehicle as well as accommodation for the next seven days. Paperwork's all done and it's time to officially hit the road to our first destination, which is Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. Side note, if you're visiting Iceland, be prepared for rain. Almost 139,000 people live right here in the largest city in Iceland. Famous for its artistic culture, there is plenty to see and do here. After 14 hours of travel, it is 10 a.m. here in Iceland and I'm starving. Everyone I know told me to try the famous Icelandic hot dog, which has been around since 1937. And while I stuffed my face, I also spotted my first overland style rig in Iceland. Seeing this only gets me more excited, which counters how tired I am. There's no time to rest as I am scheduled to have a very unique experience in my first afternoon in Iceland. Headed northeast, just about an hour away from Reykjavik, is a national park known as Thingvellir. This national park marks a tectonic boundary sitting between the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates. I'm here to dive between these two tectonic plates in a fissure created by melting glacier water, which has been filtering through about a hundred years of lava rock. These tectonic plates are a very big reason of why Iceland has so many earthquakes and volcanic activity. 
This suit should protect me from the water, which is between 2 and 4 degrees Celsius, or 36 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. A short walk in the rain and we'd be heading to the diving location. Not only would we be swimming in some of the cleanest water in the world, but underneath this glassy surface is also the clearest water in the world. You can see a lot of examples here of where lava would be flowing and creating stone to create Iceland, but then get torn apart as the two tectonic plates drift farther apart each year. If you come to Iceland, you definitely have to do this. Feeling completely refreshed as if I haven't been awake for 30 hours already, it was time to get back on the road as we needed to make our way south to find our camp spot for the night. The famous Ring Road is a highway that is 1,322 kilometers or 820 miles that connects all the villages in town around the outside of Iceland. You are able to find lots of iconic attractions along this road and I'll have to use it to get to some of the destinations I wanted to see including waterfalls which Iceland has over 10,000 different waterfalls to be seen.
the price you pay for these stunning views is you're not coming out dry whatsoever. You couldn't get enough water here in Iceland. Now back in southern Iceland around 10 p.m., it was finally time to make my way to my campsite for the night, which also will be beside an amazing waterfall. Just a side note, there are lots of no drone areas in Iceland. This would probably come as a surprise, but most of the footage you usually see of Iceland is filmed with a permit or a professional company. Between not sleeping on the plane, jet lag, and swimming in freezing temperatures, I desperately needed that great night's nice sleep I had. Listening to that waterfall really added to it. I may have been the only person walking around, but the hills were full of life. The sheep are coming down from the hills to, I'm guessing, get a drink of water. Fun fact I learned about the sheep in Iceland is that they are free roaming and only once a year all the farmers will find all the sheep they can and then call each farmer and let them know how many of their sheep they found. This is only possible because Iceland is one of the few places in the world that has almost no predators. Besides the predators in the ocean, the closest thing on land is the Arctic fox. I also took the chance to hike up to the top of Skogafoss this morning so I could take in some of the views before the ultimate search for breakfast and coffee would begin. For any coffee connoisseurs out there, School Beans Cafe is a great choice to start a morning. And of course, it's a morning in Iceland, so all the overlanders are out and about. Check out these wheels. You know the average wheel in Iceland is 42 inches? That is because all the rough and different terrain they can experience throughout the year. Back on the road again, and I know, a bit fast and furious, but I have a whole country to see and I'm determined to do it. This time, making my way down to Vic a popular little town right by the coast. This area is home to a popular attraction and a little bit of folklore. Along Vic's coastline is the famous Black Sand Beaches. What you don't usually hear is that these beaches come with a warning. Sneaker waves appear frequently on these beaches catching people off guard and pulling them into the water where they meet freezing temperatures. On average, 25 tourists die each year visiting Iceland. So remember to keep your wits about you while visiting these iconic places. Living among the cliffs, another Arctic Circle native can be found here. This lush landscape is a perfect nesting ground for the colonies of puffins that can be found on the south and west sides of Iceland.
Among the puffins stands the Rangisdranger rock. Icelandic legends say that these three rocks are trolls who got caught in the sun while pulling a three-mast ship to shore and was instantly turned into stone, stuck in time with the ocean at their back. I wonder how many more legends I'll hear on this trip. It's only been 30 hours since I stepped foot on Iceland. I've already had incredible experiences and I can't wait to find out what I'll experience next. The adventure continues, finding glaciers and traveling over Iceland's F roads. Follow along next time as we explore Iceland's interior landscape.